Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Merciful God, who sent your messengers, the prophets, to preach repentance and prepare the way for our salvation, give us grace to heed their warnings and forsake our sins, that we may greet with joy the coming of, our, of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of God's Word. Our view of Scripture must be like that of the Thessalonians. The Apostle Paul commended those Christians, saying, We thank God continually because when you received the word of God which you heard from us, you accepted it not as the word of men, but as it actually is, the word of God, which is at work in you who believe. The prophet Jeremiah warns us, To whom can I speak and give warning? Who will listen to me? Their ears are closed so they cannot hear. The word of the Lord is offensive to them. They find no pleasure in it. But scripture must be our delight. It must be our passion, our joy. It's not enough to say we believe in the Bible's authority and then ignore it altogether. I'm afraid there are some in our movement who seem to think that all that is required to be considered biblically orthodox is to assert the Bible's authority, but it is not actually necessary to read it. Friends, I hope you are reading your Bible. I pray that you're reading it every day. Meditate on God's Word. Study it. Memorize it. Teach it. Proclaim it devour it, marinate in it, and then obediently go out with the word in mission to bring God's good news to the poor and the broken and the lost. That's what Mike was emphasizing in his wonderful sermon last week. Because of the truth we know in God's word, we don't hunker down and try to stay safe from those around us who don't agree with us. We are full of hope. And so with confidence and joy, we reach out with the good news. As Paul puts it so clearly in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 12, he says, since we have such a hope, we are very bold. The motto of the 4th, 5th, and 6th grade youth group of one of our churches is, I have a Bible and I'm not afraid to use it. <laughs> Those kids get it, don't they? (laughs) One of the hallmarks of this wonderful church is a love of mission. Mission all across the globe and mission in this community. You well know that the church you are privileged to be a part of is not a refuge, not a retreat, not a sanctuary. It's a mission base. But if we look at the history of the Christian church, we know the tendency of churches to lose their mission focus and withdraw from that bold mission engagement they once had. I want to share with you this morning a parable about the church and its mission. This parable was written many years ago by Canon Ted Waddell, to describe what can happen to us if we lose sight of our mission. It's a classic. Some of you actually may have heard of it. It's called On Life-Saving Stations. It goes like this. On a dangerous seacoast where shipwrecks often occur, there once was a crude little life-saving station. The building was just a hut, and there was only one boat but the few devoted members kept a constant watch over the sea and with no thought for themselves went out day and night tirelessly searching for the lost. Many lives were saved by this wonderful little station so that it became famous. Some of those who were saved and various others in the surrounding area wanted to become associated 
with the station and give of their time and money and effort for the support of its work. New boats were bought, new crews trained. The little life-saving station grew. Some of the members of the life-saving station were unhappy that the building was so crude and poorly equipped. They felt a more comfortable place should be provided as the first refuge of those saved from the sea. They replaced the emergency cots with beds and put better furniture in the enlarged building. Now the life-saving station became a popular gathering place for its members, and they decorated it beautifully, furnished it exquisitely, because they used it as a sort of club. Fewer members were now interested in going to sea on life-saving missions, so they hired lifeboat crews to do the work. The life-saving motif still prevailed in the club's decorations, though, and there was a liturgical lifeboat in the room where the club initiations were held. About this time, a large boat wrecked off the coast, and hired crews brought in boatloads of cold, wet, and half-drowned people. They were dirty and sick. Some had white skin, some had black skin, some had brown skin. The beautiful new club was in chaos. So the property committee immediately had a shower house built outside the club where victims of shipwreck could be cleaned up before coming inside. At the next meeting, there was a split in the club membership. Most of the members wanted to stop the club's life-saving activities as being unpleasant and a hindrance to the normal social life of the club. Some members insisted upon life-saving as their primary purpose and pointed out they were still called a life-saving station, but they were finally voted down and told that if they wanted to save the lives of all the various kinds of people who were shipwrecked in those waters, they could begin their own life-saving station down the coast. They did. As the years went by, the new station experienced the same changes encountered in the old. It evolved into a club, and yet another life-saving station was founded. History continued to repeat itself, and if you visit that seacoast today, you will find a number of exclusive clubs along the shore. Shipwrecks are frequent in those waters, but most of the people drown. Never let Light of Christ become a club. Never let this building become a clubhouse. Let the truth and power of the Word of God more and more propel you outward with the life-saving good news of the Kingdom of God. Greg and Maura Hampton uh, were members of the Falls Church in Northern Virginia for a number of years while working on Capitol Hill in Washington. Greg felt called to ordain ministry, and after three years at Trinity Seminary, overlapping with Mike, um, Greg and Maura moved to Newport News to plant a church. In the last year or two, they have followed a call from God to deep engagement in an elementary school in an impoverished community. Mora spends every day volunteering in that school, and their small church has been finding ways to provide tangible, tangible support to the students and to their families. Well, recently, after getting some training with the Child Evangelism Fellowship, Greg and Mora launched an after-school good news club for children at that school, sharing the love of Christ and the good news of his kingdom. And I know some of you are involved with the good news club at Northumberland Elementary School. I am thrilled that you're doing that. Well, one day Greg emailed me to say that that afternoon, Five of the nine children in the club professed Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Mora had presented the lesson and the gospel, and five of the children said they wanted to accept Jesus. They took each one very carefully through the message of salvation, 
And each one prayed, and each one signed their name under the words, Today I became a member of God's family. Actually, it was four children at first, but when they were finished, a boy who had watched it all came over and said he wanted to accept Jesus as well. And then Mora said to the children, this is why we call this the Good News Club, because we want to share with you that the wonderful news that God loves you so much that he sent his son Jesus to die on the cross for your sins. At which point, one of the young girls named Brianna piped up and said, we shouldn't call it the Good News Club. It should be called the Best News Club. <laughs> I love that. Jesus went around Galilee proclaiming the best news of the kingdom. <laughs> I learned a verse of scripture. I think it was the first verse of scripture that I, that I ever intentionally memorized. And the Lord has used it to uh, speak to me again and again. It's Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 29. The secret things belong to the Lord our God, but the things that have been revealed belong to us and our children forever, that we may do all the words of this law. In other words, we don't know everything in this uncertain life. We don't know how things will go for our families or our finances or our health. We don't know what's going to happen in our nation. We do not know how everything is going to work out. We don't know the answer to so many of our questions. But we know enough. We know enough to have hope. Joyful, confident hope. We know enough to follow the Lord if we will but trust his revelation through the scriptures. We know enough to go out into the world with the love and the light of Christ. For whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction, that through endurance and through the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. Friends, read your Bible and grow in God's word. Let hope rise up in you. Hope for our lives now and hope for this community. I'll end by praying over you those words of benediction which the Apostle Paul prayed over the Christians in Rome. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. Amen. The candidates will now be presented. We present these persons for confirmation and to be received into this communion. And to all of you together. Do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil? I do. Do you renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? I do. God's grace shall follow him as my Savior and Lord. Will you who witness these vows do all in your power to support these persons in their life in Christ? We will. Then let us stand and join with those who are committing themselves to Christ and renew our own baptismal covenant. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the forgiveness of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? I will with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will with God's help.
Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? Let us now pray for these persons who have renewed their commitment to Christ. Deliver them, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Lord, hear our prayer. Open their hearts to your grace and truth. Lord, hear our prayer. Fill them with your holy and life-giving spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Keep them in the faith and communion of your holy church. Lord, hear our prayer. Teach them to love others in the power of the Spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Send them into the world and witness to your love. Lord, hear our prayer. Bring them to the fullness of your peace and glory. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we thank you that by the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, you have overcome sin and brought us to yourself and that by the sealing of your Holy Spirit you have bound us to your service. Renew in these your servants the covenant you made with them at their baptism. Send them forth in the power of that Spirit to perform the service you set before them. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The congregation may be seated. I invite you all to turn around to face the congregation. I invite you now to make your individual statements of faith. Uh, my life is based on my faith in Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. The only one who has come to my sin. Wow. I can say the same. My, my faith is entirely in Jesus our Savior. I 
Um, you can be the stars of my Lord and Savior. Um, I met him back when I was about, oh gosh, back in high school. And I'm so grateful that God gave his only son to be the supreme sacrifice to save us in our life. Um, and he continues to be faithful year after year after year. Mm-hmm. Even when I fail, he still offers you that forgiveness. And for that, I am totally grateful. Amen. Thank you. Send me how I believe the teachings of the Bible are unchanged. And I found the light of Christ and the church. That seems that it believes and teaches these same teachings that are unwavered by society's mm. drives and <coughs> pushes, and we're not swayed. We're not going to be here, we're not going to be accepted as much as the light of Christ. And if you're able, kneel, otherwise just remain standing. I'm going to come and pray for you. Ernie, you can stand if it's more comfortable, or kneel, whatever you prefer. Um, As I lay hands on each of these folks, would you please be in prayer for for each of them? And then join in the amen uh, at at the end of each prayer. Strengthen, O Lord, your servant Jim with your Holy Spirit. Empower him for your service and sustain him all the days of his life. Amen. How we recognize you as a member of the one holy Catholic and apostolic church and we receive you into the fellowship of this communion. God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless, preserve, and empower you. Amen. Amen. Strengthen, O Lord, your servant Carolyn with your Holy Spirit. Empower her for your service and sustain her all the days of her life. Amen. Strengthen, O Lord, your servant Ernie with your Holy Spirit. Empower him for your service, and sustain him all the days of his life. Amen. (laughs) Teresa, we recognize you as a member of the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We receive you into the fellowship of this communion. God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless, preserve, and empower you. Amen. Amen. Cindy, we recognize you as a member of the one, holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, and we receive you into the fellowship of this communion. God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless, preserve, and empower you. 
Amen. David, we recognize you as a member of the one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, and we receive you into the fellowship of this communion. God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless, preserve, and empower you. Amen. Strengthen, O Lord, your servant Faith with your Holy Spirit. Empower her for your service and sustain her all the days of her life. Amen. Strengthen, O Lord, your servant Henry with your Holy Spirit. Empower him for your service and sustain him all the days of his life. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, let your fatherly hand ever be over these, your servants. Let your Holy Spirit ever be with them. And so lead them in the knowledge and obedience of your word that they may serve you in this life and dwell with you in the life to come through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you.